Hello everyone, welcome back. This is the first video of hopefully many in a new series that I'm starting discussing functional analysis, just the basics. So these lectures will serve as an introductory course to functional analysis. The book I'll be using in discussing the subject will be the book by Miss McClure, Elementary Functional Analysis. I chose this book particularly because it's quite accessible and it has some interesting results in it that I don't see presented in too many other books. That being said, it's not too specific to where it's not appealable to a wide audience. I actually chose this book because I think the fact that she keeps the prerequisites low will make it accessible to many people. And it also will perhaps make it um, of interest to people who are not necessarily mathematicians by virtue of it being quite accessible. So I am going to try to tailor these lecture series towards not just mathematicians, but also perhaps physicists and engineers. And if you're watching this and that's what you do, please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to know who's watching this. That way I can sort of, perhaps if you're an engineer, I could find a use of this subject in engineering. Or if you're a physicist, I can look up applications and maybe discuss them in a video. That way you feel like you have a stronger connection to the subject. So as far as uh, accessibility goes, the author lists some prerequisites in the preface, namely four. So the first would be real analysis. And the second would be real, uh, linear algebra. Now I'd say out of these four, these first two are kind of non-negotiable in that it's going to be really hard for you to even read the first chapter if you have never seen the delta epsilon limit uh, definition of a limit before. Um, now to the extent to which you should know real analysis, I would say based off this book and what I'm willing to review, it would be the first six chapters of Rudin or a book that discusses the equivalent. So you might you know, in an introductory real analysis course, you might have enough coverage because I will, I do plan to review more advanced topics from that, such as the stone bayer strauss theorem. I'm not going to expect you know that, and that will be covered in review. And then as far as linear algebra is concerned, it will, it would be great <clears throat> if you already had an applied course, at least that bare minimum. Results from a more theoretical course in linear algebra, such as direct sums, when we come across them, I will state the definition. I won't go too much uh, into it besides that. So a lot of you know review of these more advanced things will be, I just give you the definition or I just give you the theorem and I won't write down the proof. Now, if the theorem is quite complicated, okay, let's say the stone bears dross, I might not prove it to you, but I'll give you an example where you can see that it's being used. Okay, now the third is complex analysis. And um, just some basic facts about holomorphic functions. This one I'm, I'm more willing to review in a bit more depth. We'll, we'll come across it quite early in, uh, in discussing, I believe it's the proof to uh, dealing with the space. It's called the Bergman space. We'll co come across the theorem in complex analysis. And again, I'm not going to expect you know that theorem. I'll state it and then give you an example where you can use it and we'll move on from there. And the, the last is measure theory. Now this will actually be, before we start getting into the content of the book, this will be what I will start by reviewing. And as the author says in the preface, and I highlighted it here, students with no prior exposure to complex analysis or measure theory and Lebesgue integration that she experienced when she taught this course, they can nevertheless, nevertheless have a successful experience with the topics presented here. So. I don't want you, especially if you're not um, far into mathematics, I really don't want you to be discouraged looking at these prerequisites, thinking I'm not going to be able to learn this stuff. I will try my best to make the subject as accessible as possible while at the same time maintaining a level of mathematical rigor because otherwise it becomes too watered down and you actually miss some of the essential material. So what I will try my best to do is Hopefully, I hope to strike a balance between rigor, but also accessibility, because I really want people to see how useful this subject has been, as I have personally found it useful in uh, 
my use of the subject applying it to fluid dynamics, which is what I work with. Okay, now with this subject functional analysis, you've, you may have never heard about it, and um, a lot of people have the uh, you know, idea that very abstract mathematics is quite useless. So it, it's fair to ask the question, who, uh, who cares? Well, if you like money, you can go ahead and travel on over to the National Science Foundation website, nsf.gov forward slash award search. Plop in the term functional analysis and you'll see quite a lot of money being awarded towards research in analysis. Now you see this Fourier analysis at top, well that doesn't say functional analysis, but Fourier analysis, a lot of the results in that subject come from functional analysis. And if you want to read a, a really deep, perhaps a research level book on Fourier analysis, there's a book by Grafakos called, uh, I believe it's Modern Fourier Analysis, or Classic Fourier Analysis. You'll want to know some functional analysis before reading that book. And obviously this guy who's studying it in convex geometry, uh, he's being awarded 264K. It's quite good. And you can see some, you can just look through the list of where people have used functional analysis in real world applications, and there is a willingness for people to invest in this kind of work. So I want you to be, feel motivated that this subject is certainly worthwhile, whether you're a mathematician or if you're working in an applied field like engineering or what else. In uh, my engineering classes, my professors have used um, topics from functional analysis in their research, but they're engineers, civil. Um, in my, in my time studying fluid dynamics, computational fluid dynamics, some highly cited papers use topics from functional analysis to come up with some very important results. So I hope this maybe motivates you to study the subject, but sometimes, uh, you know, if the money doesn't entice you, and for you it's not about money, it's about sending a message, well, sometimes that message can have noise in it. So I want to tell, talk to you about a specific application of functional analysis. <clears throat> Some of you might be an acoustic, uh, acoustics engineers. You might do signal processing. And, you know, I'm sure, I'm not a signals engineer or whatever, but I'm sure of importance would be reducing noise and noise reduction in signals processing. So if I have some message here, <clears throat> just a clean sine wave, then, or a cos, I don't know. And then that message, most of the time when you send it out, I guess it gets noisy, there's some interference. But the goal would be, I would assume, getting rid of the noise. And what I've seen, why I mention this is because I've read books, there's a book by Nikolai Nikolsky. Okay, uh, it's like called Operators, Functions, and Systems. And in that book, he talks about filters and these kinds of filters that are used in signals processing. And there's a lot of functional analysis and you can get some really cool results. So you come across this noise in the field, you wanna filter it out. What I've seen is that there are tools in functional analysis that tell you how to even choose a filter to apply to this message, how to build it. I believe in the book I read, you can represent it as some sequence of uh, Fourier coefficients. And then there's also identifying what the noise is. There's different types of noise and I suppose that makes an impact on what filter you're going to choose. But the main thing of functional analysis that is going to, what it's going to help us do is it helps us, well, maybe will help you understand how filters, the theory of filters and how they work. Because what we study in functional analysis, as I put down here, it gives you the tools to study functions that themselves eat functions and spit out functions. We call these things operators. So an operator is, if this is an operator, my input, we're usually used to in calculus, our input being a function. Or in linear algebra, our input, I'm sorry, in uh, calculus, our input being a number. Or in linear algebra, our input is a uh, vector. In functional analysis, our input is a function, and our, our output, it can either be another function, f, or it can be some real number, x. And we're going to study these quite intensely. When are they bounded? When are they continuous? All of these you know, questions you might be used to studying in calculus, we're going to try to port some of those concepts over to operators. 
operators are very useful. Um, you know, a, a, a really cool one, this is a transform, it's called the radon transform. And I don't know much about it, I'm, I'm not a radiologist, but I've used it uh, in studying partial differential equations. And so apparently this thing will, it's like an operator, you, you have some input that's like a bunch of sine waves, you know, you can kind of see them here. This is what they, uh, I think this is what an x-ray does. This is what you get, this, I suppose this is your raw data. You apply this transform to it, and you get the image of someone's head. It's quite useful, and to study the radon transform, which I have in uh, studying partial differential equations, there's some intense and really deep functional analysis to understand it. So perhaps maybe you're interested in medical physics, and uh, you want to see, maybe you ask the question, does functional, is there a place for functional analysis in my research? Perhaps there is, if you're a radiologist. And if you want to be a radiologist, maybe this motivates you. I mean, they make a pretty penny, so this maybe this might be worthwhile to study. So um, this has just been a short introduction. When we come back, I will be talking. Uh, I will just be talking about the prerequisites. We'll do a review of measure theory before we jump into the book, and maybe a couple more advanced theorems from functional analysis. But uh, nevertheless, until next time, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.